How often do you get called out on operations like this where you find ISIS weapons? It's a business. It's big business. If my methadone was free, I would have never gotten off of it at six and a half months postpartum. The eyes to the right, 328. The nose to the left, 301. Yeah. Not a good start, Thank Morris. You. New Prime Minister Boris Johnson lost a huge vote on his top priority, forcing Britain out of the EU at the end of October, no matter what. A majority of MPs, including 21 from Johnson's Conservative Party, voted to take control of Parliament to block a no-deal Brexit. Walmart's changing its approach to guns. Today, the CEO announced the store will stop selling handguns and their ammunition, certain rifle bullets that can be used in military-style weapons, and will, quote, respectfully request that customers don't open carry. The policy changes come a month after the shooting in El Paso that killed 22 people, and another the same week at a Mississippi store that killed two of its workers. A day after audio leaked of Hong Kong's chief executive telling business leaders she'd quit if she could, Carrie Lam said quitting would be the easy choice and she'd rather, quote, walk this path together with the people of Hong Kong. She's apparently not talking about the hundreds of thousands of people who have taken part in anti-government protests and made it clear they want that path to lead to her resignation. Vice President Mike Pence was in Ireland today, staying the night with his family in his ancestral hometown of Dunebeck at the Trump International Golf Club. Democrats are criticizing Pence for effectively transferring taxpayer money into his boss's bank account, when he could have stayed someplace else that isn't 150 miles away from his meetings in Dublin. This is Brigade 21. They're part of a powerful coalition of mostly Shia militias in Iraq known as Popular Mobilization Units, or PMUs. While the Iraqi military was in retreat from ISIS in 2014, civilians like Jabbar Mohammed volunteered to fight with these roving militias. And they did so with training and funding from neighboring Iran. How often do you get called out on operations like this where you find ISIS weapons or mortars or you target somebody who you believe is ISIS? Five years later, the PMU is still actively involved in clearing out the remaining pockets of ISIS in Iraq. Here in Salah al-Din, north of the capital Baghdad, a farmer was killed by a roadside IED. هاي بقايا جسد اللي المزارع اللي البارحه طقت عليه العبوه وعائلته واستشهدوا وعائلته جروا انجرحوا وهاي لقينا بقاياتها فدفناها هنا Jabbar suspects there could be as many as 150 ISIS fighters still in this area. هاي البيوت اخر نقطه من يعني وراها منطقه ساقطه يعني دواعش ورا هاي هاي البيوت يعني هاي لحد لهنا لحد هاي هنا النقاط انت كتلت داعش قبل؟ انا لحد الان يعني يمكن كانت 300 داعش يعني يسوون ساحق دواعش دائما هذه الصوره مستمره نلقى العبوات يعني <تصفيق> وهو مرات يستهدف الحشد مرات يستهدف المدني والسيارات فرقوها Jabbar's men fire shots in the direction of any potential ISIS fighters while they destroy the IED with a controlled explosion there are some people who say that the fight against ISIS is finished and you should put your weapons down and dissolve. 
وليش احكي لك عن يعني هسه احنا بهاي المنطقه فقط خلينا نسحب لان داعش تسيطر على هاي المنطقه خلال ساعات وليس بايام The US and Iran backed militias found a common enemy in ISIS. But now, amid escalating tensions between Washington and Tehran, the Trump administration withdrew all non essential personnel from Iraq due to security concerns. In an apparent effort to appease the US, Prime Minister Abdel Mahdi issued a decree to more fully integrate the PMU into the Iraqi military by the end of July. That deadline's been missed. Critics of the current government, like Salah al mutlaq who served as deputy prime minister under both Nouri al-Maliki and Haider al-Abadi, worry this move will only strengthen the PMU's influence. Look, in this issue, it's really difficult for us. Because the entry of these militias in the inside of the police and the police will destroy these institutions more than what it is on the ground. It's more than the police of the police. The United States of America has economic interest in Iraq. It has security interest in Iraq. The same with Iran. You have two big geopolitical powers who are vying for influence in this particular area through Iraq. Surely one of them's got to give. They can't both be there. If Iran is going to go to or if America is going to lose everything in this area, in Iraq and other Iraq. فالخيار لأمريكا أن تريد تخسر المنطقة كلها لو تريد تبقى محافظة على مصالحها. Do you think the Americans should withdraw their troops from Iraq? ثمانية تسعة عشرة خرجت أمريكا وتركت بعدها فراغ كبير ملئ من قبل الجانب الإيراني. اليوم الجانب الميليشياوي مسيطر إذا سحبت أمريكا من العراق في هذه اللحظة. فسيكون العراق معرض لأن يعني يسيطر عليه كليا من قبل إيران أي مفصل من منفاز الدولة ترى إيران أنه لديها مصلحة في الدخول فيه فهي قادرة على أن تدخل لأنه هذه الحكومة الموجودة حاليا ولكن الولاء الحقيقي لإيران Human rights groups are also worried about the growing influence of these forces They've accused the PMU of stoking sectarian violence through enforced disappearances, arbitrary detentions, and in some cases, indiscriminate killing of Sunni civilians. But this brigade insists they have a strong relationship with the Sunni community here. لو ما الحشد هين هذا كل هالمناطق كانت مشردة الحشد رجعوها. أكو الأمريكيين يقولون الحشد بجاب إيران. إيران دولة إسلامية وجارة. دولة إسلامية وجارة حتى إذا هي تريد تساعدنا إحنا نتقبل مساعدتها لكن أنا ما شفت بلحش بلحش جاني إيراني والأمريكيين الأمريك والله يا يبقون لو يطلعون لا والله إحنا 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 ما يفيدنا الأمريكان إحنا إحنا عراقيين إحنا عراقيين الأمريكان بالبداية شتوا بينا تاهسة أخت العزيزة إحنا إسلام عراقيين وإيرانيين الإيرانيين إسلام لكن انضمامنا عادي إحنا ما عندنا أي إشكال ننضم إلى ال القوات الامنيه بالعكس احنا والقوات الامنيه واحد مثل ما قلت لك هناك مخطط امريكي انضمامنا الى القوات الامريكيه تحت يعني تحكم ضباط تابعين الى الامريكان اكيد مخطط امريكي يعني مخطط امريكي لتجميد الحشد Do you think this pressure from the US is anything to do with its current decline in relationship with Iran عدم وجود الحشد هو استبداد الامن بالمنطقه وامريكا ما تريد هذا الشيء ويعني ضد امريكا مع ايران، يعني امريكا ظني حاربتني، ايران مدت يد العون اليها. ساعدتني باموالها، ساعدتني بسلاحها، ساعدتني بال وقفت مع بلدي ولولا ايران الصراحه انا احكيها يعني، لولا ايران لكان بلدي في خطر كبير يعني. So what you're saying is Iran helped us and you will help Iran if they have any problems in the future. طبعا اي شيء يحتاجونه الاخوان الايرانيين احنا موجودين لان ايران صاحب الجميل علينا. من غير ممكن اني يعني امد اعض ايد اللي تمدت لي يعني ما اخلي الامريكان تستخدم الاراضي لضرب امريكا لضرب ايران. What would you do if that happened? نحن ان صولات وجولات مع الامريكان سنعيدها عليه.
Constitución el régimen de legalidad, seguridad, justicia, igualdad, libertad y paz. Que Dios nos dé sabiduría y que la nación nos juzgue. Se abre la sesión. Fernando Linares Beltranena is serving out his last term in Guatemala's Congress. But before he leaves in December, he has one priority, a bill to update the reconciliation law that ended Guatemala's civil war in 1996. Esta ley de reconciliación nacional es importante. Trae paz a Guatemala. He says the bill is meant to bring justice to those who were victimized by left-wing terrorists during the war. Es nuestro rol como Congreso aprobar leyes para el bienestar del país. But what it would actually accomplish is something else. Amnesty for dozens of military officers convicted of war crimes and an end to all ongoing investigations into human rights abuses. If we look back from 96 to present, the amnesty was one-sided. Look at the statistics. We have about 70 military men in jail and only one criminal guerrilla who is in jail who has been convicted. According to the United Nations, more than 90% of the human rights violations that were committed during the Guatemalan Civil War were committed by state security forces. I dispute the numbers given by United Nations because they were collected by one-sided groups that were in favor of the terrorist insurgents. The United Nations were in favor of communist terrorist insurgents. They adopted the numbers that were collected by organizations that were one-sided. An estimated 200,000 people died during the decades-long civil war. The majority at the hands of the armed forces in a scorched earth campaign to eradicate a left-wing insurgency. In the last decade, a handful of military officers have been convicted of atrocities that ranged from forced disappearances to genocide. One of them is Francisco Gordillo Martinez, a retired military commander serving out the remainder of his 33-year sentence in a military hospital. He was convicted last year of authorizing the rape and torture of a young communist student. If Linares' push for amnesty succeeds, Gordillo would be freed. Morir tranquilo, con mi conciencia tranquila de que soy inocente. Porque yo tengo la seguridad en lo más profundo de que yo nunca di una, ni recibí ni di órdenes de esa, de esa naturaleza. Entonces, que los cargos fueron, que las acusaciones fueron esencialmente fabricadas. Fabricadas. Entonces, eso quiere decir que las atrocidades que se dicen haber cometido durante el conflicto interno, la, la, las masacres, las violaciones, los desplazamientos, ¿todo eso ocurrió o no ocurrió? Ocurrió. Sí hubo violencia, sí hubo crímenes. Eso no se puede negar. Entonces, ¿ocurrieron o no ocurrieron atrocidades bajo su comando en el ejército? Ba bajo mi comando, que yo le da nunca, nunca. No, mire, en una guerra hay actos negativos, fortuitos, eh, coyunturales, pero que yo haya dicho, vayan a hacer un crimen, nunca, 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 ante Dios Todopoderoso. Y eso, como le digo, me da a mí una tranquilidad, una seguridad de que soy un hombre de bien. Lo llamaban la mataron en 1990 por hacer una investigación sobre la población desplazada interna. Lucrecia Hernández Mac was 16 when, in a case unrelated to Gordillos, her mother Mirna was killed by a military death squad. She's now a surgeon who was just elected to Congress. She'll start her first term in January. Si esa ley de reconciliación pasa, sería una burla realmente justificar las masacres justificar todos estos crímenes y abrir las puertas para que vuelvan a ocurrir. For Hernández Mac and her allies, defeating the amnesty bill is part of a larger fight to preserve a basic historical understanding of the civil war. En una sociedad en donde los militares siempre han tenido poder, ¿verdad? En donde los militares te pueden reprimir, etc., Esos juicios orales son quizá el único espacio en donde tú puedes ver al, al victimario o al perpetrador en una cancha nivelada, así de tú a tú. Y 
ese es el valor de la justicia. O sea, no se trata de mandar solo esperar que la gente se vaya a la cárcel y se muera ahí. O sea, no es una cuestión de venganza. Es el mejor mecanismo para dar a conocer la verdad. Y es la manera en que la sociedad debiera decir esto no debe volver a pasar. Cuando la gente habla de el mirar hacia el futuro, el perdonar, ¿qué opinas de ese discurso? Eh, aquí nadie ha pedido perdón. A lot of the victims of these atrocities believe that having these convictions vacated would essentially erase the little bit of justice that has been done since the war ended. I say to them that what they're following is their own greed because they have made millions. It's a business. It's big business to prosecute military men because you get compensation from the states. So you think all of the all of the victims and families that have brought cases against military officers have been motivated purely by no, financial gain? Not purely, greatly. There is also a certain degree of vengeance. There is also a certain degree of resentment. For now, an injunction from one of Guatemala's highest courts is supposed to be preventing the amnesty bill from moving forward. Ellos impunemente están tratando de que no se conozca esta iniciativa por el fondo, por su militar fobia. Para que But Linares and his allies are choosing to ignore that. Vamos a llegar a más personas y vamos a tener suficientes votos porque lo pide la justicia. If I wasn't doing this, I would probably be getting high all throughout the day, like every hour on the hour. Instead, now I just place this under my tongue and let it dissolve. Four milligrams of the Subutex. After that, I take my prenatal pill for the baby. Ooh. Let's see if he reacts to that water. I wasn't really excited to find out I was pregnant. It was like a scary feeling. I got high with him probably until almost four months. But I was just almost certain that I would miscarry or something because at that point I wasn't really trying to get clean or nothing. I was very depressed and stressed out. I realized that I needed to start getting clean because he was still growing and he wasn't trying to exit no time soon. <laughs> So I ended up telling the nurse that I had a problem and I had an addiction to heroin. So I ended up getting a prescription from the doctors for Subutex. I got great hopes that we gonna have a successful ending. They'll be able to help me wing off the Subutex and I can begin to wake up normal without needing something to help me function in life. When you're pregnant, everybody loves pregnant people. Even people at the store stop you and like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Can I touch your belly? I'm if you want your stuff or you come and eat. Come on. It's a whole different set of eyes or response to once you have that baby. And unfortunately, it's the same way in the recovery world. The resources kind of drop off. It's like, you had the baby. We got you through your pregnancy. That's what we care about. Keep that one for you, Sting, but... I had my first pregnancy in 2015 with Emerson, who's going to be four this year. And then I just gave birth. I'm five months postpartum with my daughter, Ren. And for that pregnancy, I was still on methadone. Um, I had been on methadone and clean and sober for a few years. My recovery needs to keep going, but all the resources are kind of like, you've maxed out. It's easier in the state of Missouri and in the streets of St. Louis to find illegal substances than it is to find someone who will prescribe you methadone. Yay. And I think that's where 
our government and our rules and just how we do things need to change. Missouri, it was, it was the first in the country to target coverage for pregnant women who are dealing with substance use disorder directly. House Bill 2280 extends Medicaid coverage for women who present with substance use disorders for 12 months postpartum. Got the bill passed, overwhelming support. The governor signed the legislation. The effective date was supposed to have been August 28th, 2018. It was really something that I guess I didn't particularly expect after all the work that we did to get the bill passed, to then have to try to do work to get them to implement the bill. I think we have to be careful in somehow, you know, maybe stigmatizing women because they might have some sort of substance use disorder. Kind of one of the downsides of being the first in the country to do something like this was the fact that we were the first in the country to do something like this. Art is pointing in the right direction. The fourth trimester would be that time after delivery. It's a period of high stress and women are at higher risk to relapse during this period of time. When somebody is pregnant and they're getting a lot of medical care and they're seeing their doctor a lot, they have close contact with their addiction medicine provider. The shift then focuses after they deliver towards the baby. And then if their Medicaid runs out, it is just a period of time where they also don't have their addiction medication and they are at risk for relapse. That is the crisis. Do you want to get on the trampoline? Easy, Bob. If my methadone was free, I would have never gotten off of it at six and a half months postpartum. It saved my life. You done? I'm sober, but I still need help. Not that I wasn't ready to get off of it, but it's a big adjustment. You know, it's $537 a month that I do not have. You want to wear your crown? I definitely felt rushed. And I wish I would have had a little bit more time to do it a little differently. It's Josiah. He was born April 22nd, 2019. I had relapsed when I was nine months. So it ended up making me go in labor or whatever. But Josiah was born with nothing in his system, so he was clean. I think I was just getting so close to the end that I was just stressed and, you know, I kind of felt a little hopeless too. I was taking Subutex while I was pregnant. But when I, after I gave birth to him, they switched me to Suboxins. They gave me the same effect as the Subutex. They just kind of made me more drowsier. So I was like, no, I got to get these out of me. So I stopped taking them. And I weaned myself off of the Suboxins. The first week, week and a half, it was real terrible. I was running off, throwing up. I couldn't eat nothing for real. But i say about the third week, I was kind of feeling fine, you know. I was able to get up and walk around and interact with the kids, walk to the store. Yep, so i say, I, if I believe, if I would have never got pregnant with him, I don't know where I'd be. Like, he did save me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did save my mom. The purpose of treatment is to have women thrive. And if you can bring them to the point where they're thriving, it's just a shame to shoot them in the foot and deny them coverage for the medication that's helped them achieve that. Ezra Furman, I'm here to talk about our song, I Wanna Be Your Girlfriend, from our record, 12 Nudes. I wanna be your girlfriend. I wanna walk down the street from your arm. 
in the song, I'm asking to be your girlfriend in an old fashioned, uncomplicated way, even though I don't look the part of a cisgendered girlfriend and don't fit the old fashioned dream. And that's part of where the yearning in the song comes from. Writing songs is kind of like having a dream or, or vomiting. It's like you've, you've been putting stuff into your head and then it mixes together in unexpected, unpredictable ways and out it comes. All my friends are writing their resumes. The first verse is about writing resumes, applying for jobs. I didn't even know what I was writing about yet. And then I realized it's a job application for the job of girlfriend. It sounds like a, maybe a transistor radio or uh, something close even to like a walkie-talkie. Baby, would you find that so odd? I just, I've always loved those sounds and people usually talk me out of it for good reason. You know, you can't do that on every song, except the Strokes did, that's what I always bring up. I played guitar, one's got a kind of tremolo effect. I think it's a pretty subtle tremolo. It gives you just a bit of a wobbly feeling like you're drunk. <laughs> and then one is doing just very, these gentle strums. Oh, and then I think there's another one that's going, so we call them the skanks, when it's like, dun, 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 you know, a little high note chord, replacing those block harmonies that an old doo-wop song would often have. Just pile on a couple more guitars. This is a dynamic song. Sometimes it's very open and calm, and then it like builds into some like really pretty loud playing. The rhythm section just like found the places to almost drop out completely, and then places to like hit as hard as you can. It's almost angry. So it's punctuated by these, yeah, big hits on the, on the drums. It's the lead guitar going like <laughs> The goal with the song was to, like kind of in between those big, loud, angry, or frenzied moments, still have the gentleness of the song, still hold on to the old fashioned, romantic cliche. And of course, for queer people, this is just a little anthem for you, if you need one. That's right, little old me, I want to be your girlfriend and blow your mind each night when you come home.